We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Hi folks, Lisa here at Everything is a Lie. Uh, it's been a long pause between videos, I apologise for that. Um, I'm behind in my presenting, I'm not quite as far behind in my research, but today I wanted to address a number of questions posed by Mick at Rebel Without a Pause. Uh, I felt impelled, I felt sleepless nights, I felt like there was a lot of thinking going on and I should really speak up and say something. So I'll let me give you some context. On Sunday past, I got an email for Cathy, your channel's Jack's fan. And she sent some images like the ones that you've just seen and the location. Now, we changed a few emails and images and guessed a lot. And at the end of this exchange, Cathy said, Mick, you have a lot of smart people who watch your channel. Why not ask them to help identify what we're looking at? And as you can see, I've found a few places of interest. So, now's your chance to shine. So I also watched Jack streaming and Jack's pointed out the what should have been blatantly obvious, the, it says on the bottom, Maxar Technology. So this is the company that is doing the um, infrared imaging and their website is very impressive until you get to the space technology. But either way, satellites or satellites, it's infrared um, technology that we're looking at and provides fascinating insert so uh, insight where we're looking um, partially beneath the surface so on these images here you'll notice that uh, the different layers are visible whether it's just surface or infrared um, and it's commonly being used for geological surveying now apparently so on to mining, I thought it would be worth the exercise, not realising just how big an exercise it was, um, because essentially that's what Mick's talking about. It's some sort of mining, as far as I can tell. Uh, and then uh, the history of mining in Egypt goes back to ancient Egypt. So what was most important was, well, what they're mining recently, but that's an immense task in itself, as I also discovered. Looking, though, looking with the eyes, um, some of the old diggings are interesting, the holes, the cave-like structures. It made me look with a totally different set of eyes. had to take my mud eyes off and put mining eyes on. I've never looked that deeply into mining before, so this has been a bit of an exercise for me. So that seems to be a, a thing I've seen a lot recently. I keep finding strange stuff. Right, oh, that's a wee bit different. I've no idea why. So whilst investigating mining, this was an interesting article, but for a totally different reason than I expected. Uh, it mentions here that in Egypt, gold was considered the flesh of the gods, especially that of the ancient sun god Ra. Egypt also famous for the scarab beetle, which uh, feeds on decomposing matter. But anyway, so the top exports for Egypt would be petroleum, gold, nitrogen fertilisers and insulated wire. 
Uh, and as far as insulated wire goes, they didn't make the top 10, but I'm thinking anything from optic fiber back to your basic copper, I'm not really sure. So as for finding some kind of just nice basic overview of mining, I was struggling until I found this clip, which do watch it if you're further interested. Um, it has some really interesting, almost meditative kind of haunting music, which when I was playing it at half speed, trying to pick up everything that was in there, uh, was a wonderful soundtrack for the demise of another self-limiting belief system. But... Mainly I was watching it for what they're mining. So I'll give you the full list during the video, um, which I won't show you all of and I can't play the music because of copyright. But it gives us a really good look at the whole picture of Egypt and you'll notice the difference between the area that we are now where there's a lot of all different types. Um, and I'll give you the full list in a sec. And then the area where Mick was looking and the blood, if it is blood or whatever the hell the red stuff is, um, it's a totally different picture. Uh, very limited as to what's there. Uh, what was the list? I had it. Clay, gypsum, marble, bentonite, a bit of basalt. Um... There was no mention of iron ore, which is depicted by the little red dot, I believe. Um, and there was no mention of gold in that area as well. We're just coming up to it now. I give you the full list of minerals. Alabaster, asbestos, barite, basalt, bentonite, beryl, breccia, cassilarite, chromite, Crystalline limestone, clay, coal, copper, corundum, feldspar, fluorite, gold, granite, graphite, gravel, gypsum, imperial porphyry, iron ore, kaolin, lead, lead zinc, limestone, magnesite, manganese, marble, mica, molybdenite, niobium, ochre, peridot, phosphorite, pumice, pyrite, salt, sand black, sand white, Sandstone, serpentine, shale, sulphur, cyanite, talc, tantalum, thorium, titaniferous ore, travertine, tungsten, turquoise, uranium ore, vermic vermiculite and zinc. Not bad for the second day. But from there, do you think I could actually work out what they were mining? Still not. So I don't know if it, the only thing that was mentioned was it may be gold but not be on this map or is it iron ore? I was looking for red colour. I devoted a lot of time trying to work out what could be producing that red colour and I still don't know. I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. We're moving on. Anyway, back to biological matters, which it appears to me that's what we're looking at. And a lot of people would immediately jump to Mud Fossil Uni when looking at this kind of stuff. And um, I'm just going to say that I would agree with Mick, and Mick has been quite clear in his comments, that uh, Roger has been unfair to flat earthers and... Whether he's an intentional gatekeeper or not, uh, he is limiting his way of thinking and he's limiting other people's way of thinking by not allowing that. And you can't talk of giant mythological or biblical creatures and expect that they're all going to fit on the tiny globe. So please don't give me comments of I must look at Roger because I'm happy that we're actually looking at this without Mud Fossil Uni's involvement at all. I was thinking is it some kind of surface mining or something, but why did it, I mean, this would make sense if it was surface mining, what I'm saying. But when you see them scattered all over the place, it don't make any sense. And then you've got them in a row, you're right across the desert. These are the same things. 
There's no tracks. They just a straight line. So this habit. Same again. So it's not a defensive thing because there's big holes all the way through it, so that don't work. So why? Oh, pick me, pick me. No, I didn't really know either. Um, I was quite compelled to look into it further though. So off down the rabbit hole, venue, duct, uh, valve, somewhere I went. Uh, I went down a lot of rabbit holes, but I'll show you what I found so far. See, some of them, they look as if they're, they're going in like a tunnel. I'm going to say that because, right, this is, this is all mine workings, I think. This has been excavated. But it's just like surface mining. I know, destroying the earth the way we do. I'm just skimming off the top. They know what a giant hole that goes down for a quarter of a mile. So, maybe they were conscious of the environment. Right, so, uh, any guesses yet? Oh, I know! I know! Me! Me! I'd spent some time looking around Australia too and looking at the desert, as we call it. I think we're going to be redefining the words desert after this exercise. Um, some of the topography, the colours, the shapes, and trying to work out exactly what's there. And I honestly thought I'd found a mud fossil, so to speak, in Australia. Looking at these images, I mean, a lot of things came to mind, especially these big lines, you know, are they some sort of parasite are they following veins are they still alive are they dead um i had some hideous thoughts in fact i went to some very dark places which i'll talk about in a moment um but i had been looking at some of this stuff just in western australia and i found my little wood lake man in kalgoorlie so he's over Kalgoorlie. There's a chalk outline of him to give you a bit of an idea what I'm talking about. Is he anything? Is he just an accident of, you know, mining and land subsidence and salt and whatnot? Or are we, are we taking an organ out here? Um, from the position... I don't know if he's face up or face down. I will say that down at Woodlake, down here, there's a little bit of a mound there. That's why I'm saying he. But that could well be his tailbone. He could be face down. Or she, for that matter. Um, and I don't, I don't know if I'm looking in any, at anything. It's fanciful thinking. But why is all the gold in that spot? Or is the entire area gold and they've just got that bit mined so far do we dig up the entire country so if he were a man he'd be about 100 kilometers tall um and you know if i am looking at areas in western australia well we've got a lot going on um, here wave rock right next to is it Magic Lake, I think? Um, and, I mean, the mind boggles there. That's a rock shaped like a wave. And I'm going to have to go there. I'm going to have to go there and look at it. Um, but this is what it looks like for those that have never heard of it. Are we talking biology? Are we talking melted stone? Are we talking some kind of major event? 
no idea. So, yeah, fanciful thinking, but everything's still on the table as far as I'm concerned. You know, we, uh, we've been lied to about everything, hence everything is a lie. So let's look at this helpful infographic from mining.com, which I actually found really interesting, um, looking at the different elements between uh, humans, the atmosphere and the ocean, and comparing human especially to earth crust as opposed to earth. So I'm not really sure what the difference is there as opposed to the entire universe, the one voice. So there's a lot of the same stuff in a human body. We're mining human bodies down there. It's all the same elements. It's all the same chemistry. So back to Mick for a moment. A couple of choices. Well, three. Right. This is an unknown creature. On the beach, it's tiny. Uh, as as a creature, it would qualify as an animal. These are crystals under a microscope, so they would qualify as minerals. These are potatoes and they would qualify as plants. I love it. So is it animal, mineral or vegetable? The answer is yes. Right, what's going on here? Now, where this, I don't know, I'm, I'm not, can we call it blood? Right, okay, I've said it out loud. Right, so whenever I see this blood, the diggings near it are all red. So why is that? How does that work? So, and this is like, like the, the, this is just the road, this is just the, the tracks for vehicles or whatever. It's like a flatbed truck, but it's not. Right, so don't ask, like I say. It does look like blood. So what's in blood? What are they mining from blood? Um, if indeed that's what it is, um, it could be something else entirely. I'm just going to go through the exercise. So standard minerals that you would see mined are in blood. Um, these are the macro minerals, so there'll be more. And then less of the micro minerals. Is it blood? Is, it looks like blood. To me, it's the most obvious thing, so we'll press on. But there are many bo body systems. Uh, lymph did occur to me. Uh, and this would explain some of the colours too, the different fluids. Moving on with blood. And human blood, that is. Not ruling out that it could be animal or otherwise, but the colour. So, and the, that colour varies too between the level of uh, oxygen in blood and then also in death. How does blood vary in death? Let's look at gold for the moment. Natural occurrence of gold in the human body. Well, I'd heard it's there. This article states though that uh, it's very tiny amount and that's the same amount I'm coming up with everywhere. I just picked this particular article because it's not Wikipedia. So each person has approximately two milligrams of gold, which is equivalent to 
lots of zeros and a 3% of their body weight. If you do the math, 5,000 humans in total have about one gram of gold, not a lot. Like majority of other trace elements, most of the gold is found in your blood. More than anywhere else though, it is concentrated in the regions around your heart. That might be because of the blood flow concentrated there. Gold specks in your body are not there by coincidence, they have a purpose. Specifically, they are responsible for transduction of electrical signals across your organs, muscles and other tissues. Plus, they maintain and keep your joints strong and flexible. On an interesting note, yes it was, the same um, weighing human has 10 times as more silver in his body. Yes, silver is floating inside you as well. Didn't you know that you were a walking mine? So the two main ways we would see gold as mined would either be in nuggets or um, small pieces or what's called alluvial, that which washes out of the soil in fine, fine grains. But the vein terminology in itself is interesting, isn't it? I mean, miners disappear off down holes chasing veins. Uh, coal is in seams, for instance, totally different thing. I did notice that these little fibrinogen uh, plugs, I can never say that, how many takes? Fibrin fibrinogen plugs look a little bit like nuggets. But I'm not an alchemist, I'm not a chemist. Organic chemistry gives me a headache. Um, all I can tell you from here really is what I see. And when Mick shows all those scary little bleeding holes, I see alveoli, I see lungs, um, I see blood vessels, um, I see all sorts of weird colours that indicate living tissue, so many different parts and varieties. So... Is Egypt a corpse or part of a corpse? Are we all living on giant corpses? This is a desert. This is in the middle of a desert. Seriously? Come on. The main function of the respiratory system is to provide the oxygen from out of the air and remove the carbon dioxide into the air. This takes place in the lungs, with the gases carried to and from the cells by the bloodstream. The exchange of gases between the blood and the air occurs in the alveoli, microscopic air sacs in the lungs that are surrounded by tiny blood vessels. When we inhale, all 300 million alveoli expand and fill with air. Oxygen diffuses from the alveoli into the blood and carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood into the alveoli. Why? And what is this? Right. What's that stuff? Seriously? think the rocks that's a fact there's no way that's rocks no I don't think so either so from here I pulled out textbooks and I considered mining and I considered bodies and I considered cells and I was actually really perplexed um uh, are we living on a living thing? Are we living on a dead thing? I'm going to assume it's dead because it hasn't complained about all the mining. So uh, are we all living on giant bodies? I, I can't say for sure. But I was studying uh, health before I fell down the mud flood rabbit hole. So I pulled out textbooks and I kept looking and... I was struggling for um, insight, really. Um, 
What happens to a body? What happens to a body after you die? So there I was. The textbook wasn't enough. I had to study decomposition. So if you're squeamish, don't look too much at the images. Concentrate on the words. What we want to look at here, though, is that it's largely dry decomposition that we see. If you look up um, de decomposing bodies, etc., you'll get or animals. Largely, you'll get uh, dry decomposition. But I was thinking here about the what was previous before Egypt became a desert. So to look at uh, mummification is basically a hot, dry kind of decomposition. The other kind of, and it's not called wet decomposition, but it's basically the opposite of dry, is um, bodies submerged either in water or in bogs. So uh, if you're brave and you really want to look into what I'm thinking of here, we're talking about maybe bog bodies. So bog bodies was a good search term. Um, so basically bodies that have been left in deep mud bogs where the temperature is lower, the pH is much lower, it's acidic like vinegar. There's also a lack of scavengers to eat the body and help it decompose and there's a much greater rate of preservation. We know, for example, that tannins produced by the moss can be as acidic as vinegar, which can basically turn skin into leather. One of the strangest properties of bog bodies is that while skin, hair, and organs may all be preserved, the acidic mixture often dissolves calcium phosphate in the bones, leaving the body without a skeleton. Without a skeleton. And skin of leather? If you're over 100 kilometers tall, how thick would your skin layer be? So it's at this point that I feel, after too many cop shows in my youth, that I need to call forensics. I think I'm looking at a lung. I think I'm looking at lung tissue, alveoli, and a bronchial tree, which means cartilage around those openings. And it's very light because, of course, a lot of it is, is air. I'm just cutting through a section of lung. And what I've come across there now is there's some blood vessels in there that are bleeding. But you can also see here, I think, that I've cut through some bronchial passages as these run through the tissue of the lung. And there's actually hollow bronchial passages there carrying the air down to the structure of the lung here, which is full of millions and millions of alveoli. And that's actually quite, quite rough there, because even down at this smaller level, there are still rings of cartilage on the bronchial tree that maintain the lumen of even the smaller bronchial passages preventing claps of the lung. And then I caught lifting the lid because I knew Mick was going to be on there with Jax and also Kathy from Jax Fan. And Kathy was talking about these hydrothermal vents, which just kind of added more um, fuel to the fire for me. When you're looking at these vents, um, well, they're obviously the gas or the fluids or whatever is coming from somewhere. And these tubes must be open to conduct the gas. Um, which then brought me to Gilf Kabir, which is oh, a totally different landscape yet again. So this article on Science Direct seems to sum up the findings for those uh, using Satellune imagery, we detected more than 1,300 small crater-like structures distributed over an area of 40,000 square kilometres in the western Egyptian desert, close to the Gilf Kabir Plateau, 
62 of them were raised, were visited in the field and morphological observations, rock samples and ground penetrating radar were obtained. After presenting our fieldwork results, we discussed two of the hypotheses for their origin, hydrothermal vent complexes and meteorite impacts. At present, none of them fully satisfies the available observations. Hmm. They're going to get a shock, aren't they? So Cathy had also mentioned, uh, to my surprise, the Valley of the Whales, whales with feet that, I don't know, de-evolved or they grew feet so they could walk into the desert and die. No, I'm kidding. But, you know, changing water levels, seas forming, seas unforming. Um, again, back to natural disasters, man-made disasters. I'm out basically of the limit of my knowledge. Mythology, I'm lost. Forensic science is beyond me. Geology, biology, biochemistry, metallurgy, um, mining, oil and gas, natural gas, anyone? But I really just wanted to put forward a bit of a feasibility study, if you may. Um, so how could it have happened? How could Egypt have gone from green and lush to desert? Uh, from my angle, what I've looked at, skin slide is a hideous thing and that happens when bodies are exposed, um, even exploding body parts. Or as we've looked at so many other places, natural or man-made disasters. So in the interest of brevity, I'll leave it there. I could go on for days more and it's been days for me. A big thank you to Mick um, at Rebel Without a Pause, uh, to Jackie and to Kathy and anyone else who contributed. I had a great time reading the comments and thank you all for kicking me way out of my comfort zone with this one. Let us know what you think in the comments. Anything else I wanted to cover? The mining, that was the other thing. Um, I think it's some sort of injection or solution mining that is pushing the dried blood towards the alveoli where the capillary beds are and they can gather it. Um, I don't know. I worked for a year in oil and gas and I managed to have absolutely nothing to do with mining at that time. I'm really wondering what's under the ocean there now. So coming up, back to um, mud flooding and history busting in Western Australia. Can't wait, actually. Really looking forward to get back in, getting back into it, um, overcoming some financial and equipment hurdles here, but moving on. See you soon, folks. Thanks for joining me.